I, O oh Hecuba, have pity both on thee and thy son, thy misfortunes and thy suppliant touch, and am willing, in regard both to the gods and to justice, that this impious host should give thee full revenge, provided a way could be found that both you might be gratified, and I might, in the eyes of the army, not seem to mediate this destruction against the king of Thrace for Cassandra's sake. For there is a point in which apprehension hath reached me. This man the army deems a friend, the dead an enemy. But if he is dear to thee, this is a private feeling, and does not affect the army. Wherefore consider that thou hast me willing to labor with thee, and ready to assist thee, but backward should I be murmured against among the Greeks. Alas, no mortal is there who is free, for either he is the slave of money or of fortune, or the populace of the city or the dictates of the law constrain him to adopt manners not accordant with his natural inclinations. But since thou fearest and payest too much regard to the multitude, I will liberate thee from this fear. For consent with me, if I meditate vengeance against the murderer of this youth, but do not act with me. But should any tumult or offer of assistance arise from out of the Greeks, when the Thracian feels the punishment he shall feel, suppress it, not appearing to do it for my sake. But of the rest be confident. I will dispose all things well. How then? What wilt thou do? Wilt thou grasp the sword in thine aged hand, and strike the barbarian? Or with poison wilt thou work? Or with what assistance? What hand will conspire with thee? Whence wilt thou procure friends? These tents enclose a host of Trojan dames. Meanest thou the captives, the booty of the Greeks? With these will I avenge me of my murderer. And how shall the victory over men be to women? Numbers are powerful, with stratagem invincible. Powerful, I grant. I mistrust, however, the race of women. And why? Did not women slay the sons of Egyptus, and utterly extirpated the race of men from Lemnos? But thus let it be. Give up this discussion. But grant this woman to pass in safety through the army. And do thou go to the Thracian host and tell him, Hecuba, once queen of Troy, sends for you on business of no less importance to yourself than to her, and your sons likewise, since it is of consequence that your children also should hear her words. And do thou, O Agamemnon, as yet forbear to raise the tomb over the newly sacrificed Polyxena, that these two, the brother and the sister, the divided care of their mother, may, when reduced to ashes by one and the same flame, be interred side by side. Thus shall it be. And yet, if the army could sail, I should not have it in my power to grant thy request. For the deity breathes not prosperous gales. We must wait, watching for a calm voyage. But may things turn out well, some way or other, for this is a general principle among all, both individuals in private and states, that the wicked man should feel vengeance, but the good man enjoy prosperity. O thou, my country of Troy, no longer shall thou be called the city of the invincible. Such a cloud of Grecians envelops thee, with a spear, with a spear having destroyed thee, and thou hast been shorn of thy crown of turrets, and thou hast been discoloured by the dismal blackness of smoke. Hapless city, no longer shall I tread my steps in thee. In the midnight hour I perished, when after the feast sweet sleep is scattered over the eyes, and my husband, from the song and cheerful sacrifice retired, was sleeping peacefully in my bed, his spear on its peg, no more dreaming to behold the naval host of the Greeks treading the streets of Troy. 
but I was binding my braided hair with fillets fastened on the top of mine head, looking into the round polished surface of the golden mirror that I might get into my bed prepared for me. On a sudden, a tumultuous cry penetrated the city, and this shout of exhortation was heard in the streets of Troy. When indeed, ye sons of Grecians, when, if not now, will ye return to your homes, having overthrown the proud citadel of Vilium? And having left my dear bed in a single robe, like a Spartan virgin, flying for aid to the venerable shrine of Diana, I hapless fled in vain, and I am dragged, after having seen my husband slain, to the ocean waves, and casting a distant look back upon my city, after the vessel had begun her way in her return to Greece, and divided me from the land of Troy, I wretched fainted through anguish, and consigning to curses Helen, the sister of the twin brothers, and the Idean shepherd, the ruthless Paris, since his marriage, no marriage, but some furious hate hath utterly destroyed me far from my native land, and hath driven me from my home. Whom may the ocean refuse ever to bear back again, and may she never reach again her paternal home? Enter Palamestor. O oh, Priam, thou dearest of men, and thou most dear Hecuba, at thy sight I weep for thee, and thy city, and thy daughter who has lately died. Alas, there is nothing secure, neither glory, nor when one is faring well is there a certainty that he will not fare ill. But the gods mingle these things promiscuously to and fro, making all confusion, so that we, through ignorance, may worship them. But wherefore should I utter these plaints, which in no way tend to free thee from thy former calamities? But thou, if thou hast aught to blame for my absence, forbear, for I chanced to be afar off in the middle of my Thracian territories when thou camest hither. But soon as I returned, as I was already setting out from my house, this maid of thine met me for the selfsame purpose and delivered thy message, which when I had heard, I came. O oh, Palamestor, I am ashamed to look thee in the face, sunk as I am in such miseries. For before one who has seen me in prosperity, shame overwhelms me being in the state in which I now am, nor can I look upon thee with unmoved eyes. But impute not this to any enmity I bear thee. But there are other causes, and in some degree this law, that women ought not to gaze at men. And tis indeed no wonder. But what need hast thou of me? For what purpose didst thou send for me to come from home? I am desirous of communicating a private affair of my own to thee and thy children. But order thy attendants to retire from these tents. Depart, for here to be alone is safe. Friendly thou art. This Grecian army too is friendly towards me. But it is for thee to signify in what manner I, who am in good circumstances, ought to succour my friends in distress, since, on my part, I am ready. First, then, tell me of my son Polydor, whom thou retainest, receiving him from mine and from his father's hand, if he live but the rest I shall inquire of thee afterward. He lives, and in good health, as far as regards him, indeed, thou art happy. Oh, my best friend, how well thou speakest, and how worthily of thyself. What dost thou wish, then, to inquire of me in the next place? Whether he remembers at all me, his mother? Yes, and he even sought to come to thee by stealth. And is the gold safe which he brought with him from Troy? It is safe. At least it is guarded in my house. Preserve it, therefore, nor covet the goods of others. Certainly not. May I enjoy what is mine own, O lady? Knowest thou, then, what I wish to say to thee and thy children? I do not. This shalt thou signify by thy speech. Be my son loved by thee, as thou art now loved of me. What is it that I and my sons must know? The ancient buried treasures of the family of Priam. Is it this thou wishest me to inform thy son of? Yes, certainly. Through thee, at least, for thou art a pious man. What necessity, then, is there for the presence of these children? Tis better, in case of thy death, that these should know. Well hast thou thus said, and tis the wiser plan. Thou knowest, then, where the temple of Minerva in Troy is. Is the gold there? 
But what is the mark? A black rock rising above the earth. Has there anything further to tell me of what is there? No, but I wish thee to take care of some treasures with which I came out of the city. Where are they, then? Hast thou them hidden beneath thy robes? Amidst a heap of spoils they are preserved in this tent. But where? These are the naval encampments of the Grecians. The habitations of the captive women are private. And is all secure within, and untenanted by men. Not one of the Greeks is within, but we women only. But come into the tent, for the Greeks are desirous of loosing the sheets of their vessels homeward from Troy, so that, having done everything that thou oughtst, thou mayest go with thy children to that place where thou hast given my son to dwell. Not yet hast thou suffered, but peradventure thou wilt suffer vengeance. As a man falling headlong into the gulf where no harbour is, shalt thou be hurled from thy dear heart, having lost thy life. For where the rites of hospitality coincide with justice and with the gods, on the villain who dares to violate these, destructive, destructive indeed impends the evil. But thy hopes will deceive thee, which thou entertainest from this journey, which has brought thee, thou wretched man, to the deadly mansion of Pluto. But thou shalt quit thy life by no warrior's hand. O oh, me! I wretch am deprived of the sight of mine eyes! Heard ye the shriek of the man of Thrace, my friends? O oh, me! There again! O oh, my children, thy miserable butchery! My friends, some strange ills have been perpetrated within the tents. But for all your nimble feet ye can never escape me, for by my blows will I burst open the recesses of these tents. Behold, he uses violently the weapon of his heavy hand. Will ye that we fall on, since the instant calls on us to be present with assistance to Hecuba and the Trojan dames? Dash on, spare nothing, break down the gates, for thou never shalt replace the clear sight in those pupils, nor shalt thou behold alive those children which I have slain. What? Hast thou vanquished the Thracian? And hast thou got the mastery over this host, my mistress? And hast thou done such deeds as thou sayest? Thou wilt see him quickly before the house, blind, with blind wandering steps approaching. And the bodies of his two children, whom I have slain with these most valiant Trojan women. But he has felt my vengeance, but he is coming as thou seest from the tent. But I will retire out of his way, and make good my retreat from the boiling rage of this most desperate Thracian. Alas me, whither can I go? Where stand? Whither shall I direct my way? Advancing my steps like the four-footed mountain beast on my hands and on my feet in pursuit? What new path shall I take in this direction or in that, desirous of seizing these murderous Trojan dames who have utterly destroyed me? O oh, ye impious, impious Phrygian daughters! Are they accursed? In what corner do they shrink from me in flight? Would that thou, O son, couldst heal, couldst heal these bleeding lids of my eyes and remove this gloomy darkness. Ha! Ah, hush! Hush! I hear the carefully concealed step of these women. Whither shall I direct my course in order that I may glut myself on the flesh and bones of these making the wild beast banquet, inflicting vengeance on them in return for the injuries done me. Wretch that I am, and whither, whither am I born, having left my children deserted for these fiends of hell to tear piecemeal, a mangled, bleeding, savage prey to dogs and a thing to cast out on the mountains? Where shall I stand? Whither turn? Whither go? As a ship sending her yellow canvas sails with her sea-washed pulses rushing to this lair of death, the protector of my children? Oh, miserable man! What intolerable evils have been perpetrated by thee! But on thee, having done base deeds, the god hath sent dreadful punishment, whoever he be that presses heavy on thee. Alas! 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 O Thracian nation, brandishing the spear, warlike, bestriding the steed, nation ruled by Mars. O oh, ye Greek sons of Atreus, I raise the cry, the cry, the cry. Come, come, hasten, 
I entreat you by the gods. Does any hear? Or will no one assist me? Why do ye delay? The women have destroyed me, the captive women. Horrible, horrible treatment have I suffered. Alas me for my ruin. Whither can I turn? Whither can I go? Shall I soar through the ethereal skies to the lofty mansions where Orion or Sirius dart from their eyes the flaming rays of fire? Or shall I hapless rush to the gloomy shore of Pluto? It is pardonable when anyone suffers greater misfortunes than he can bear for him to be desirous to quit a miserable life. Enter Agamemnon. I came, having heard the clamor, for Echo, the mountain's daughter, did not sound in gentle strains through the army, causing a disturbance. But did we not know that the Phrygian towers are fallen beneath the Grecian spear? This tumult might have caused no little terror. For I know thee, Agamemnon, having heard thy voice. Seest thou what I am suffering? Ah, wretched Polymester, who hath destroyed thee? Who made thine eyes sightless, having drowned their orbs in blood? And who hath slain these thy children? Sure, whoever it was felt the greatest rage against thee and thy sons. Hecuba, with the female captives, hath destroyed me. Nay, not destroyed me, but more than destroyed me. What sayest thou? Hast thou done this deed as he affirms? Hast thou, Hecuba, dared this inconceivable act of boldness? Ah, me! What wilt thou say? Is she anywhere near me? Show me! Tell me where she is, that I may seize her in my hands and tear piecemeal and mangle her body. What ho! What are you doing? By the gods, I entreat thee, suffer me to lay my raging hand upon her. Forbear, and having banished this barbarous deed from my thoughts, speak, that having heard both thee and her in your respective turns, I may decide justly in return for what thou art suffering these ills. I will speak then. There was a certain youth, the youngest of Priam's children, by name Polydor, the son of Hecuba, him his father Priam sent to me from Troy to bring up in my palace, already presaging the capture of Troy. Him I put to death. But for what cause I put him to death? With what policy and prudent forethought now here? I feared, lest the boy being left an enemy to thee should collect the scattered remnants of Troy and again people the city. And lest the Greeks, having discovered that one of the sons of Priam was alive, should again direct an expedition against the Phrygian land, and after that should harass and lay waste the plains of Thrace, and it might fare ill with the neighbours of the Trojans, under which misfortune, O king, we are now labouring. But Hecuba, when she had discovered her son's death, by such treachery as this lured me hither, as about to tell me of treasure belonging to Priam's family, concealed in Troy, and introduces me alone with my sons into the tent, that no one else might know it. And I sat, having reclined on the centre of the couch, but many Trojan damsels, some from the left hand and others from the right, sat around me as by an intimate friend, holding in their hands the Edonian looms, and praised these robes, looking at them in the light, but others, beholding with admiration my Thracian spear, deprived me of my double ornament. But as many as were mothers caressed my children in their arms in seeming admiration, that they might be further removed from their father, successively handing them from one to another. And then, amidst their kind blandishments, what think you? In an instant, snatching from somewhere beneath their garments their daggers, they stabbed my children. But they, having seized me in a hostile manner, held my hands and feet, and if, wishing to succour my children, I raised my head, they held me by the hair. But if I attempted to move my hands, I wretched could effect nothing through the host of women. But at last... Cruelty, and worse than cruelty, they perpetrated dreadful things. For having taken their clasps, they pierce and gore the wretched pupils of my eyes, then vanish in flight through the tent. But I, having leapt out like some exasperated beast, pursued the blood-stained wretches, searching every wall as the hunter, casting down, rending. This have I suffered, while studious to advance thy interest, Agamemnon, and having killed thine enemy. 
but that I may not extend my speech to a greater length, if any one of those of ancient times hath reviled women, or if any one doth now, or shall hereafter revile them, I will comprise the whole when I say that such a race neither doth the sea nor the earth produce, but he who is always with them knows it best. Be not at all insolent, nor in thy calamities, thus comprehending the female sex, abuse them all. For of us there are many, some indeed are envied for their virtues, but some are by nature in the catalogue of bad things. Agamemnon, it never were fitting among men that the tongue should have greater force than actions. But if a man has acted well, well should he speak. If, on the other hand, basely, his words likewise should be unsound, and never ought he to be capable of speaking unjust things well. Perhaps, indeed, they who have brought these things to a pitch of accuracy are accounted wise, but they cannot endure wise unto the end, but perish vilely. Nor has any one yet escaped this. And this in my prelude is what I have to say to thee. Now I am going to direct my discourse to this man, and I will answer his arguments. Thou that assertest that in order to rid the Greeks of their redoubled toil, and for Agamemnon's sake that thou didst slay my son? But in the first place, monstrous villain, never can the race of barbarians be friendly to the Grecians, never can this take place. But what favour wert thou so eagerly currying? Wert thou about to contract an alliance, or was it that thou wert of kindred birth, or what pretext hadst thou? Or were they about to ravage the crops of thy country, having sailed thither again? Whom, thinkst thou, wilt thou persuade of these things? The gold, if thou wert willing to speak truth, the gold destroyed my son and thy base gains. For come, tell me this, how, when Troy was prosperous and a tower yet girt around the city, and Priam lived, and the spear of Hector was in its glory, why didst thou not then— if thou wert willing to lay him under this obligation, bringing up my child and retaining him in thy palace, why didst thou not then slay him, or go and take him alive to the Greeks? But when we were no longer in the light of prosperity, and the city by its smoke showed that it was in the power of the enemy, thou slewest thy guest, who had come to thy hearth. Now hear besides how thou wilt appear vile. Thou oughtst, if thou wert the friend of the Greeks, to have given the gold, which thou confessed thou hadst not thine but his, distributing to those who were in need, and had long been strangers to their native land. But thou even now hast not courage to part with it from thy hand, but having it, thou still art keeping it close in thine house. And yet, in bringing up my child, as it was thy duty to bring him up, and in preserving him, thou hadst fair honour. For in adversity friends are most clearly proved good." But good circumstances have in every case their friends. But if thou wert in want of money, and he in a flourishing condition, my son had been to thee a vast treasure. But now thou neither hast him for thy friend, and the benefit from the gold is gone, and thy sons are gone, and thou art as thou art. But to thee, Agamemnon, I say, if thou aidest this man, thou wilt appear to be doing wrong for thou wilt be conferring a benefit on a host who is neither pious nor faithful to those whom he ought, no holy, not just. But we shall say that thou delightst in the bad, if thus thou actst. But I speak no offence to my lords. Ah, ah, how do good deeds ever supply to men the source of good words? Thankless my office to decide on others' grievances, but still, I must, for it brings disgrace on a man, having taken a thing in hand, to give it up. But to me, be assured, thou neither appearest for my sake, nor for the sake of the Grecians, to have killed this man, thy guest, but that thou mightest possess the gold in thy palace. But thou talkest of thy advantage, when thou art in calamities. Perhaps with you it is a slight thing to kill your guests, but with us Grecians this thing is a board. How, then, 
In giving my decision, thou hast not injured. Can I escape blame? I cannot, but as thou hast dared to do things dishonorable, endure how things unpleasant. Alas me! Worsted as it seems by a woman who is a slave, I shall submit to the justice of my inferiors. Would it not, then, be seen as just, seeing as thou hast done wrong? Alas me! Wretched on account of these children, and on account of my eyes. Thou sufferest? But what do I? Thinkest thou I suffer not for my child? Thou rejoicest in insulting me, O thou malicious woman. For ought not I to rejoice on having avenged myself on thee? But thou wilt not soon, when the liquid wave Shall bear me, dost thou mean, to the confines of the Grecian land? Shall cover thee, having fallen from the shrouds. From whom meeting with this violent leap? Thyself shall climb with thy feet up the ship's mast. Having wings on my back, or in what way? Thou shalt become a dog with a fiery aspect. But how dost thou know of this my metamorphose? Dionysus, the Thracian prophet, told it me. But did he not declare to thee any of the evils which thou sufferest? No, for if he had, thou never wouldst thus treacherously have taken me. Thence shall I conclude my life in death, or still live on? Thou shalt die, but the name of thy tomb shall be... Dost thou speak of it as in any way correspondent to my shape? The tomb of the wretched dog, a mark to mariners. I heed it not, since thou at least hast felt my vengeance. And it is fated too for thy daughter Cassandra to die. I renounce these prophecies. I give them for thyself to bear. Him! Shall his wife slay, a cruel guardian of his house? Never yet may the daughter of Tyndarus have arrived at such madness. Even this man himself, having lifted up the axe. But, ho, oh, thou art mad, and art desirous of obtaining greater ills. Kill me, for the murderous bath at Argos awaits thee. Will ye not, slaves, forcibly drag him from my presence? Thou art called at what thou hearest. Will ye not stop his mouth? Stop it, for the word is spoken. Will ye not as quick as possible cast him out on some desert island, since he is thus in past endurance insolent? But do thou, wretched Hecuba, go and bury thy two dead, and you, O Trojan dames, must approach your master's tent, for I perceive that the gales are favorable for wafting us to our homes, and may we sail in safety to our native country, and behold our household and family in prosperity, having found rest from these toils. Come, my friends, to the harbor and the tents, to undergo the tasks imposed by our masters, for necessity is relentless.